Kasper Sinfala in fourth place overall and Mona Lisa Malvoleto who broke a duck early in the season and won her first ever sprint and that was in Liberets in classic style back on the 12th of January. And Elena Soboleva completing the lineup here for uh, Russia. Soboleva, one of the up and coming youngsters in the Russian squad. A very uh, small but very strong athlete, Soboleva. So, under starters' orders, 1190 meters. Well, for me, that had to be a false start. I'm amazed the gun wasn't <laughs> fired a second time, but uh, they're off. And uh, so important to get a good start. We saw that with Kilonen and our teammate Marvelato trying to do the same. Get to the front early, try and hold on to it. So, Soboleva, who I think was responsible for the start, the, the false start, but nonetheless unless the jury have a look at it, but uh, actually you can't blame the athlete because they weren't recalled, so it has to stand. It has to. Uh, Mario Bjergen at the back, uh, I thought the, this aspect or this part of it, the climb after 200 metres, I thought should be in second or third position at the moment at the back. Looks like she's slipping, so the Norwegians have gone quite light on the wax to, in order for them to have a faster glide factor, and we'll have to wait and see if that has paid off. So down they come to this turn where they literally go back on themselves Elena Soboleva just 21 years of age but uh, the sprint classic under 23 world champion of this season she won that title in January at Liberets so uh, leading the field here and nothing to lose uh, respect yes but not too much but it's really hard double polling here and you can see that being left there is Anna Haag at the back there already struggling remember they're actually going into the wind at this moment it's a strong wind david and i was wondering if marit bjergen uh, it's pip 17 was she wanting to uh, be at the back to get the drafting if you like and i think it is an advantage to be second or third at this moment and then to try and move into the top two uh, as you take the final 150 meters bjergen making it through from last to first it's what we call a false straight here because you think you're coming into the straight but actually there's this turn that takes you round into the straight. Other than the wind, it's an absolutely beautiful day and now again they've got the wind against them here and you can see Marit Bjergen on the near side there with Gaijova of uh, Canada and also trying to move up there, Fala on the far side. Right behind is Marvelato and now they go into the uphill climb. I think Marit has shown the rest of the world there that her upper body strength, her double pulling power is excellent, but, uh, well, she's losing a little on the climb. Good move by Marvelato, went the shortest distance and really has powered up the hill. This is her coming of age season. Mona Lisa, Marvelato and Kilonen, two of their real top stars. Not everything's gone well for the Finns this season, but these two have performed with credit and it's Marit Bjergen behind uh, Mona Lisa and uh, 250.9 so it is quicker and that means that Kasperson Faller, Miken Kasperson Faller uh, that gives her 251.8 which is actually faster than Johaug from the first quarter final. It's so believe it, David, uh, the inexperience, she led it most of the way, and I think uh, the outcome where she finished six seconds behind in last position, that's a warning to it, taking the lead too early. Quarterfinal number three sees uh, Justina Kowalczyk as the fastest qualifier, Lorian van der Graaf from uh, Switzerland, who focuses on sprinting. 16, this is uh, Ingvild uh, Flugstad Ursberg for uh, Norway. And then here is uh, Justina. Justina, already champion of the World Cup, has the title secured for the season. But when you actually look at her performances across the season, as you see Krista Latenmaki, what is remarkable is the fact that she is the second best sprinter and really underlines that she is a fantastic all-round athlete. So, Kowalczyk wears the yellow bib as the World Cup leader. And then you've got six Hannah Kolb here. 
Latin Marky for Finland, Ersberg for Norway, Van de Graaf for Switzerland, and Holly Brooks wearing 26 on the far side there, who we saw first in uh, happy, smiling form. And that X drive in the back, just a reminder that this race also counts for the X drive points. Well, that was certainly a better start this time. I'm sure it was a, an early start for uh, the Russian in the earlier heat, but they're off. And again, Finland to the front uh, once again. And it is a good strategy, I think, to get up this climb. Surely, Justina Kowalczyk in yellow will be at the front by the top of this climb. So strong on the uphills. Yeah, I think jo Justina, the bit she's going to hate is when she gets to the top here and then you face that uh, turn, which is what, like 360 degrees, you're going round on yourself. And therefore, if she gives herself a position to go into that turn first, then she's going to be much more comfortable. And she does, as we saw in Draman last week, David, she really does like being at the front in order to give her the space. But uh, she's clearly taken into account the strong wind she's going to encounter as she turns around this corner. And if she's at the front, it'll be hard to work for her up there. Now you can see her on the right-hand track there, so to cut the corner, she's going to have to come out of those tracks. Now, there she's allowed a couple of skating steps legally. That's right, you're allowed to, well, step, step turn. You're not allowed to take it too far out of the corner. And there have been athletes uh, in the men's field disqualified for just taking a number of skating steps too far around the corner. And Justina is inevitably best when she's dictating. Hannah Cole there at the back of the race at the moment. Ersberg for Norway in second place. Then you've got Lattenmarki in third. Behind Lattenmarki, Holly Brooks. Behind Holly Brooks, you've got uh, Hannah Kolb of Germany in the black and yellow. And so, Justina just using this fantastic power that she has and just getting ready now to come round this turn. Well, this certainly feels the energy they're giving. It's a faster heat, David, I'm sure, at the moment by 1.5 or even two seconds. Kowalczyk's trying to break away so that there's no uh, tuck-in, no uh, wind drafting factor, and she's beginning to achieve that. Ersberg in second place there is the third breast sprinter of the season. No victories, but a couple of podiums, including uh, the podium in Drammen, which was uh, something she was really high about afterwards because that's, you know, to get a podium in Drammen, it's a special sprint course. If you're Norwegian to do it on that course, it's extra special. But there goes Justina, just leaving the rest uh, and Ersberg. They were in the Indian file there. Latin Marki, Anna Kolb's moved up. Holly Brooks has got completely left behind there. And. This is Justina just putting so much pace into this. It's interesting, David, you know, there's, there's still another three to go and she's not saving one particle of energy. It's all out. Look at the time, 2.47. Well, that's a full three seconds faster than the fastest heat so far. So uh, Kowalczyk and Ersberg ease through. Now, in third place, you've got Latin Maki who was, let's call it, three seconds behind, which makes her 2.50. Um, and that would get through, actually. And I'm just looking at Hannah Kolb wouldn't. So I still think at this particular moment it's uh, Hannah Kolb. Um, sorry, it's Ersberg who definitely, I think, has a chance of a best loser place. And then in the previous quarterfinal, um, Fala. But that's unofficial. I think Justina put all her cards out on the, on the table, and I think Justina will be doing that same strategy, giving us that same strategy right through to the final. This is always a dilemma, isn't it, when you set a course in the centre of a city, whether actually it's quite demanding enough. I mean, in terms of length, it is. 1,190 metres, nothing wrong with that. But it, has it got enough to test you? And, well, there's a buoyant uh, Ishida. Masako Ishida wearing 29 for Japan and uh, Katarina Smutna who's been racing well actually in distance and in sprints Charlotte Kalla who uh, has been running out of gas I'd be worried about her whether she could sustain from here all the way through to a final uh, Katu Niskanen who I think is again one of the Finnish rising stars she's capable of racing a, a range of distances and Dotsenko for uh, Russia. 
So this is a pretty interesting contest. Perhaps this is the one which is going to be hardest to fathom out at the moment. We all knew that Justina in the previous one was going to go off. Here's Keegan Randall. What's Keegan going to do? If this was a freestyle sprint, I wouldn't be... I wouldn't be questioning, but it's a classic sprint. Uh, it's slightly different, and of course she was nine seconds behind Akilonen's uh, time, qualifying time earlier, so you would get the feeling that Randall not ready for this, but she turns her mindset around when it comes to the gun, and she's racing alongside five others. She raises her game every time. Poised to take off. So, the gun releases, and it's a a quick run using the leg power for those 15, 20 meters. Then it's arm power before the leg power again to the top of the first climb. Sheeta didn't like the track she was in and moved straight across. Thought Randall's start was very professional. Just uh, interesting if we ever see a replay of that, just to see how she positions her legs for that first stride. And oh. there she is on the near side, herring boning up there. This is just running. That's a lot of energy, so her whack's not great, David. That's why she had to go for the edges. Now she's doing the very good classical technique, as it's called, or the classic technique. Now look at the arm power through Randall, but losing time, losing space. So it's uh, Charlotte Kaller up there uh, being pursued by uh, Niskanen of Finland. And then Keegan Randall in the red bit, but she's not even third at the moment. And Dotsenko and Ishida is the one. Uh, poor young, well, not so young Ishida, but poor Ishida because I, I can only suspect, Mike, that her skis are just not running at all. There's something severely wrong. She did have a bad missed time start. This heat, David, is running at exactly the same, or Kala is running at the same time as Kavalchuk earlier heat. Yeah, well, the problem for me about Kala doing this is she might survive and get through to the semi-final, but she'll do far more damage to herself than Justina I, will. I think so, and I think she will lose pace here in relation to Justina into this severe headwind. Is this her own anxiety about how difficult it is to qualify and deciding that, you know, she's got to go for broke. She's being pursued here by Dotsenko for Russia. And then right behind, you've got Niskanen for Finland. And I suppose for Kala David, it's like the, the Summer Olympics, of course, in London. It raised the game for the local, for the local athletes. She's trying to raise her game, Kala, here at home in Stockholm. So colour it is now from Niskanen, then Smutner in third place, and Dotsenko dropping back there, and Keegan Randall only fifth, and Ishida sadly out of this all too early. And now Smutner, who I said, you know, has been in really good form. Just look at that. Good acceleration, and she's really in uh, optimal position now as they go for the final uphill climb. And taking on colour, and this is a good run by Katri Katarina Smutner. I love the way that she just kind of hid in there, David, in behind Niskanen, and then as soon as we came to the section where the wind is very strong behind you, she moved to the front. So up the hill comes the young woman who was born in the Czech Republic, used to race for the Czech Republic, but then found more support in Austria, which is why she switched countries. Kala versus Niskanen, Kala near side, Niskanen the far side there, Niskanen the Finn doing much the better, and 2.46, Mike, that is actually quicker than Justina. <laughs> that uh, final 100 meter climb, Justina wasn't, wasn't pushed, and of course Smutna put on all her energy for the climb. Randall, well, she started well, but ran out of energy. And that gives Kala a chance to perhaps get in as a fastest loser. So to the last of our quarterfinals, and Jean looking pretty happy. Ida Ingsmar's daughter for the host nation Sweden. Eight, another Russian. This is Shapovalova, who's had several nearly attempts, but uh, on one or two occasions has actually fallen over. And Katya Vizna, the fastest of these six in this particular quarterfinal.